I'm here with head softball coach Amy Tudor. And Amy, your season's starting up here uh, this next week. Talk about some of the expectations you have for the team this year. Yeah, our expectations every year are to win the conference uh, and go to regionals. Uh, last year we fell a little bit short of that. But it's the farthest we've gotten. And we actually did our team goals today, and that's our number one priority is to make it to regionals. Now on the team, you return a lot of uh, veterans. Uh, let's, let's start with the infield. Talk about who you have back and who will make an impact for you in the infield. Oh yeah, in the infield, uh, Katie Hanson will be back starting at second. Um, really good second baseman, good uh, team morale player, vocal. Uh, Alex Bousquet will be at shortstop again. Um, had an exceptional year last year and uh, expect her to produce RBIs again. Um, Ashley Bousquet will be at third base again. Um, she's steady, strong, and definitely will be looked upon to be our clutch hitter. Um, first base will be kind of roving. Uh, Megan Flanagan will see time there. Hillary Cartman will see time there. And Danny Pugh, when not catching, will see time there. Talk about the importance of having a quality veteran infield with the Bousquet twins both being juniors and Katie being a sophomore. What does that mean for to kind of like set the tone for the defense? Oh, I think it's huge. I mean, all three players have had big time game experience and they all play like they are seniors, which is nice. Um, they all play a little bit different styles, uh, but it all kind of meshes together. Um, you know, when a ball's hit to them, I expect it to be caught every time. And that's a nice feeling to have. Now, who do you have back in the outfield, and who do you have uh, coming in that you think might uh, see some playing time? Yeah, I mean, Larissa Franklin will be back in center field. Um, she's an exceptional athlete, um, a lot of athleticism, um, and gained a lot of exp game time experience last year playing, and she progressed as the season progressed. Um, I expect big things out of her, and also uh, Brittany Couture, um, you know, playing in left field. She's, she's kind of like our team vocal leader. Um, she gets people going. She's always upbeat. Um, she's a team player, which is nice. Um, and so returning those two starters will be huge for us. Other newcomers coming in. Um, outfield is a position that a lot of times hitters play for me. Uh, Taylor will be a, a, new, a newbie in the outfield. She's fast. She's got a good attitude. She's vocal. Presley's the same way. Um, Hillary Cartman will see some time in the outfield as well as Audrey will be on the outfield at, point, uh, at some point, and then uh, Abuther will be back returning and had some game experience last year. Um, and we expect her to have a, a bigger impact at the plate. Now you return two players that have experience behind the plate um, in Danny Pugh and Audrey Mentary. Talk about those two a little bit and what they bring with their experience. I think they both bring competitiveness. You know, when they're back there, they're both competing to be the starting catcher, which is huge. And so they're always challenging each other. Um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses, and both will be used. Right now, um, I don't have a number one or a number two catcher. I think they'll split time. But they've caught pitchers, um, especially Miranda and, and Megan Flanagan, uh, coming back. And they know their strengths and weaknesses, and they're just they're really a joy to work with because they always bring a good attitude to practice. Now in the pitching circle, you you lost one of the best pitchers in program history, one of the best in the conference history in Courtney Cronin, but you return first team all-conference selection Miranda Kramer and uh, Megan Flanagan who also won 10 games. Talk about the experience you have back in the pitching staff. Oh yeah, I think the experience uh, Miranda gained last year when called upon, she, she definitely stepped into that role. Um, it's huge for her. You know, she got to pitch in the championship game. She knows what it feels like to win, and she knows what it feels like to lose. Um, and so the expectations for her since you came in have gone through the roof. Um, I thought she performed, she got better as our season kept going and we started playing and she felt more comfortable. Same thing with Megan. Um, she's had a ton of experience. She's pitched in the conference tournament before her freshman year when, when she had to. And so both of them have a lot of experience. Um, and I'll, I'll expect them to anchor the pitching staff. And then Sarah uh, is our new pitcher. And uh, she's a little quieter and more timid, but um, you know she's got some good weapons. And as soon as she gains more confidence and gets more game experience, I think she'll make an impact. Now, there's not a senior on the team this year, um, only a handful of juniors, so a relatively young team. 
what what does that mean for you as a coach, knowing that you've got this team as a whole for this year and next year as well? You know, I, I think it's great. I think that it, you know, having seniors can be a bonus, and having seniors can be, not be good. Um, and in this case, I expect my junior class to step up and be leaders. They've been here. A lot of the juniors have played in every single game, so it's not like we have a team that has no game experience. Uh, returning all the the kids that played last year, which are almost all of our award win letter winners um, at conference. So, I don't think that it's going to have a huge impact as long as the junior class step steps up and accepts that leadership role because um, they know they can come back next year but they're ready to win now now you opened this the week, uh, season this weekend at Iowa State talk about the upcoming tournament and just your entire schedule as a whole yeah I'm excited to finally play somebody um, I think the girls are too you know it gets tedious being inside all the time um, gotta love that snow but um, you know, we're excited to open up. Iowa State, it's obviously a, a, a season team. Um, Big 12, it's always nice to go in there and, and play. It's a dome tournament, so that should be interesting. It'll be our first one. Um, they're excited, and I think we're excited um, to see how we're going to handle this new squad. And then we, we go on and we play at Lipscomb, we play at New Mexico, um, and then we end up at Texas Tech, which Texas Tech will be a huge challenge for us. Um, but I think it's something that we need to we need to do so we're ready to play the top teams in our conference um, and then we open up and our first home opener is UMKC so that's always a battle um, you know they freeze returns for her senior year and you know she's definitely quality on the mound um, and then we just progress throughout our season with some midweek games conference is always tough you never know who's going to show up um, and so it's just exciting I mean I'm, I'm looking forward to it now how much is it in the team's favor that three of the four top teams coming in, UMKC, North Dakota State, and Western Illinois, all have to come to Fort Wayne to play here this year? How much of an advantage does that give to the team this year? Well, I can say I'm happy I don't have to go to Fargo or Macomb. Um, but it, it is an advantage. It's nice to play at home. Those are long bus trips for us. Um, you know, it's, it feels good to play in front of your home crowd. And they, they are definitely top top notch teams, as well as a few others. Um, I think they'll have impacts. Maybe they didn't get the ranking, but I think they'll have some impact uh, on our conference this year. But yeah, it's huge. It's so nice to play at home. Um, it is tough to beat a few of those teams on the road. 